Hi, I am Sol Marcus and I am a naturopathic doctor. This is a short video on using saliva to test cortisol and how to interpret these cortisol tests. Saliva has been used to measure cortisol for about 30 years. It's very commonly used in what's called functional medicine. It's used by holistic medical doctors, naturopathic doctors, and other people in this field. But it's also getting into the mainstream of conventional medicine. It's even recommended by the American Endocrinology Society for the diagnosis of Cushing's disease. And I can provide some links about that below. But unfortunately, many medical doctors are not familiar with saliva cortisol testing. So often someone might get a test done and go in and show it to their medical doctor only to be told that the test is invalid. If someone tells you that a saliva cortisol test is invalid, then that's just being non-scientific at this point and just not being aware of the research. There might be certain cases where the test isn't very useful, but that doesn't mean that it's not a valid test. So these are the first test results that we're going to go over. Um, the way that this chart is interpreted is that green area is really where you want cortisol to be. And if cortisol is high above the green area, then it's elevated. And if it's below that green area, then it's low. You notice that the green area is a lot higher in the morning than at night. And that's because uh, normally in a healthy person with a normal cortisol rhythm, cortisol will be 10 times higher in the morning than at night. And because cortisol changes so much throughout the day, and there can be aberrations in each person's cortisol rhythm, that's why it's necessary to get multiple samples throughout the day. On most functional labs, they will measure cortisol four times, in the morning, the afternoon, sometime in the evening, and before bed. So on this test, we see that the morning cortisol was very high. It was um, really off the chart, the chart only goes up to 30. This person's, I believe, is actually like 60 or 70. And then it goes pretty much bound down to normal in the afternoon, and then it shoots up again at night. Now, if cortisol was only done in the morning or through a blood test, it might show cortisol slightly high, but it would not show all these aberrations in the um, cortisol rhythm. So we can see that cortisol is very, very high in the morning, and it's very high at night. And cortisol can be a big cause of insomnia. Now, if I look at a test like this, and I see that big spike of cortisol going into midnight, and how it's still very high in the morning, well, then I know this is not someone who's probably sleeping that well. And in a case like this, you know, sleep can really be improved um, by taking supplements that um, will lower cortisol at night. Supplements such as um, phosphatidylserine or serifos are two of the more common ones. Um, Relora is another supplement that will do that. But this is an aberrant cortisol pattern um, caused by some type of prolonged stress at some point, which is really causing this person to um, you know, really put out their stress hormones late at night. And with sometimes insomnia is not the hardest thing to treat, but if you're using supplements, you really need to know what is causing insomnia. Someone can have insomnia and not have any problems with the cortisol rhythm, or cortisol can be way, way off. But clearly this is a case where lack of sleep is directly related to cortisol. Okay. This person's test looks um, all over the place. It really wasn't so crazy as it looks because that midnight sample for this person um, did not come out. Enough saliva didn't get into the collection vial. So it's really only the first three points that are valid. And actually on this person, 8 a.m. and 4 p.m., um, it wasn't 30. It was um, extremely high off the charts. This had this person had extremely high cortisol, and you're talking about something coming in with high blood sugar, high blood pressure, can't relax, feeling their heartbeat pounding. Uh, more, uh, it's almost a classical, just high 
blood pressure or hypertension case with uh, weight gain also. And this is directly contributed to um, cortisol. Cortisol is going to raise um, blood pressure. It can raise blood sugar. Cortisol by itself can be responsible for diabetes. It's also going to be responsible for abdominal obesity. If you see a lot of weight gain around the abdomen, especially in women whose um, hormones are causing more weight gain around the hips. Well, if there's weight gain around the abdomen, that's something that's caused by cortisol. Uh, so this is just someone who's gone over a lot of stress throughout their life, or they might put themselves under stress. It might be the type of person who's working 60, 70 hours a week for years on end and thinking that this is um, them and they can handle it and they're fine but all that time they're just triggering the stress response and it's just going higher and higher and higher. In some people eventually the adrenals give out and they become exhausted and they get low cortisol but until in some other people the adrenals do not become exhausted they just keep on pumping out cortisol and then the next thing you know you can get a lot of symptoms especially the blood pressure and blood sugar, insomnia and you know that person can end up going to a medical doctor and getting medications for diabetes, medications for hypertension, medications for insomnia, when really a starting point can be looking at cortisol. In terms of high blood sugar, um, usually that's going to be related to diet and insulin, but cortisol by itself will raise blood sugar. So if there's just high blood sugar and someone is not eating a lot of carbohydrates, well then cortisol also may be something that's worthwhile to look at. And now we're going from someone who had very high cortisol to very low cortisol. This is low every point during the day and this is more of an adrenal fatigue case. This is someone who's not going to have energy, is probably not going to wake up feeling that well, might have a big crash late in the afternoon, is going to be exhausted at night. And ironically, often in these cases, people won't sleep well and they may actually start waking up at 3 a.m. Uh, if cortisol is too high or too low in the middle of the night, that can lead to issues with insomnia. Uh, this is someone who's probably been under some prolonged stress, but instead of causing cortisol to be really high, it's just kind of beating down the stress response and cortisol is very low. And besides needing some type of adrenal support, this person is also going to have to do some other work to find out what type of stress has led to this um, depleted state. I would say from my experience, I've seen people with high cortisol respond very well to just treating the high cortisol with supplements, but if cortisol is low like this, then probably taking some B vitamins or adrenal adaptogen herbs probably is not going to be enough. Uh, there might be some issue with psychological stress, there might be some type of physiological stress. Often it can be related to the digestive system, could be some type of virus, infection, whatever it is, a more extensive intake has to be done to find out what was wearing this person down. On this person we see a good example of why you really need to test cortisol throughout the day. This person was about double normal in the morning and it was pretty low during the afternoon and evening. And this is a, another insomnia case, but um, it's not cortisol high throughout the day. There are other cases where it's high in the morning and continue to be high throughout the day. And those type, type of cases, some supplements were needed to be taken in the morning and evening to keep cortisol in control. This person may need some supplements in the evening so cortisol doesn't spike up at night but um, during the day could actually probably use a little bit of adrenal support depending upon how much energy that they have. Okay, and on this last test, um, cortisol is actually not overall high or low, but there is a disrupted cortisol rhythm. It is too low at night, so this person, I mean, it's too low in the morning, so the person is not going to wake up with energy, is going to be sluggish throughout the afternoon, but then cortisol is coming up later in the day, so um, this person is actually having trouble falling asleep. And in this situation, of course, in addition to looking over the rest of the case and helping them in what other, other health challenges they have, um, taking some adrenal support in the morning would be helpful. 
but also later in the day to take some other type of adrenal support that calms down cortisol so it doesn't continue to go up would be helpful. So over time, taking some things to support cortisol in the morning and other stuff that calms it later in the day can help normalize this pattern. You can see that just taking a single cortisol sample in this person would probably show, like if it was on a blood test, that cortisol is normal, even though there is a very aberrant pattern.